This first video about the passive voice in scientific writing is a quick concept review about what passive and active voice are. The passive voice occurs when something is being done by someone. In grammatical terms, it's formed with a to be verb plus the past participle form of a verb plus whomever is doing the action, as in these two examples. The food is delivered by the waiter and the temper tantrum was thrown by my daughter. The passive voice also occurs when something was done, but it's not clear who did it. The doer of the action is missing or obscured, as in these examples. Mistakes were made and the toy was found. In these sentences, actions are happening, but no one is clearly acting. In contrast, the active voice happens when someone does something. It's formed by a subject plus a verb and sometimes an object, as in these examples. The waiter delivered the food. My daughter threw a temper tantrum. It's important to understand a few things about the passive voice before moving forward. Here's what it's not. Direct, concise, or perfectly clear. That said, here's what it can be. Strategic useful, and standard practice, sometimes. For example, with obvious, unknown, or irrelevant agents. In each of these examples, the doer of the action probably doesn't matter at all, which is why the passive voice is totally fine. Another reason we use the passive voice strategically, to maintain sentence cohesion. In this example, because the first sentence ends with information about the optional Pants Friday policy, it works best to begin the second sentence with the policy as the subject. We could make the second sentence active by saying that the student body voted on and passed the policy, but that would disrupt sentence cohesion.